it's a good day today. You know, we took a day off. They seem fresh, and uh, we're getting some kids back out here with us. Uh, I think that'll continue to happen as we go through the next few days. Good double day. We'll come back tomorrow with a nice single. Excited about the fan day tomorrow. Our kids are excited about it, be able to get out here and be with the fans. And uh, we'll get a good practice in. The kids will have the afternoon off. And then we'll, uh, like I said, come back here, evaluate the film, and spend some time with the fans, take off. We're off on Sunday this week. And then we will scrimmage on Monday. Uh, we possibly were talking about pushing that back. But we will go ahead and scrimmage on Monday. It'll be a little bit of a uh, not as long as anticipated. But uh, we will scrimmage probably close to 60 to 70 plays. Gary, you mentioned getting some kids back today, but do you know roughly a kid like Landish, how long he's going to be out? And with the kids you've had out so far, has it hampered your ability to get some things done? Yeah, it hampers a little. I wouldn't say for what we want to get done, it hampers the <coughs> progression of those kids. Um, but I would also say it kind of opens up windows for some other young men to be able to, to get involved. So, you know, it's not what we want. Um, Landish specifically, he moved around. He's walking around pretty good. Um, I, I would be very, very surprised if he didn't play against LSU. I agree without getting into specifics about your injuries. Is there anybody on that list that you know wouldn't be able to play in the opener right now? Um, everything is really tweaks and, you know, uh, Bruises, so no, no one comes to mind right now and say, oh, he's not going to be able to play uh, against LSU, which is a great thing. The key is, is we just, you know, some of those kids need every rep they can get practice-wise, so getting them back out here is so important in the first next week. Is it unusual to have to take the step you did to give the guys a day off to, to heal up? Is, is, is that a, <coughs> kind of an unusual thing for you? Yeah, it, well, that was uh, definitely a precaution for me. I just felt like we had a bunch of injuries and we didn't appear to be heavy legged uh, when I communicated with the kids um, there was none of that and I believe those seniors are going to tell me the truth if I ask them if they're fatigued and uh, they felt that you know there was camp they're tired but uh, I thought the communication from the kids was good so I was surprised uh, I thought it was a point that we just simply needed to take a step back and just give them a day off regardless of what they were saying or how they felt and um, it came at a it came at a time we were able to do that and we turned around and obviously made up the two a day today so you know those first few days were, were tired mentally and physically it's it's football camp but uh, we'll get them back in I feel we're moving in the right direction with those injuries you've been pleased with your three freshman wide receivers but KV and Wheelwright have been out for an extended yep. period now are they in danger of Kind of being left behind a little bit at this point. Yeah, if you've been out for that long and you got three guys that have come in and competed the way they've competed, you know, absolutely. I mean, sooner or later, it, uh, as bad as it is to say, it, you know, without the reps and somebody is producing in front of you, then, you know, it's a natural progression. And we're not believers in saying because somebody gets hurt, they lose their spot when they're injured. But, you know, those two young men never really had a spot. Um, so they're, they're in a position to compete for a spot and will remain in a, comp a position to compete. But, uh, you know they've they've got to get out on the field, which they want to. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, they're it hurts them as uh, way worse than anybody else. I promise you. Do you think you're going to take all three of those kids to Houston? For yes, three absolutely. There's no doubt about that. They will be there and and they will play. Do you have any update on Vontae Jackson? Is he going to be able to play football yeah. anymore? Vontae's. Uh, we're going to evaluate and see and um, talking with Vontae. Vontae's in a, you know, he's in a spot where he's, he's his knee is. Um, you know, it's just not where he wants it to be and where we want it to be. So we're going to take a big, deep breath for a few days here and then make the best decision for Vonte. And, you know, he's highly involved. Obviously, it's his call within the uh, decision-making process, and we're here to support him whichever way he decides to go. How serious was Derek Strauss's injury? Uh, he'll be okay. He'll be, you know, just a good old normal collarbone, supposedly, So, uh, from what I know about that. So he'll be back, you know, a few weeks, however long that takes. Gary, how much thought do you put in to have a little a breaks in monotony like like playing the golf like doing mm -hmm. doing things like that to kind of put a smile on guys face uh you know it's something that i i think about um i don't really you know lay awake at night and thinking about it but i think it's it's important to just have a, a few little ideas for them to be able to be kids and for the coaches to be coaches and um i think it creates a family environment and it creates a team so uh you know it just it's really things you just kind of think about it, spur of the moment things that come up. And, um, you know, even today to be able to do what we did today was, was pretty fun stuff, you know, I guess. How's camp, how's camp gone in your mind with, with those things as a backdrop? Uh, solid camp. I would say a very, very solid camp. We, you know, we've got uh, to do a great job from here on out. And I would say we're, you know, we go back and forth. You know, what we want to do, what we want to get better at one day, we, we make some strides. and. 
take throwing the ball, for instance, and protecting, and then the next day we kind of take a step backwards, and we take a step forward on running the foot or stopping the run, and then we kind of take a step, you know, backwards on on stopping the run. So that's give and take, I suppose, by the offense and the defense. But I just need to see more consistency in those areas and more earned wins. Uh, you know, not not a not a blown protection and, and not a poor throw. You know, earn your right to, to good football and. We're moving in the direction when it comes to that, but uh, it's been a solid camp. They're working hard, and we still got a long ways to go uh, in the camp, but we have a long ways to go to tell we're ready to play. Here is Kenzel going to be the, perhaps do both kickoffs and punts? Do you know yet? Uh, yeah, he would. If we played tomorrow, he would do both, and he would be definitely back there on the kickoff returns, being the lead returner, and mm -hmm. he would also be the punt returner. What is the biggest challenge in getting these guys to learn some of the option plays that they're doing? A lot of these guys maybe haven't run those. I think just run them more. You know, I mean, we're, we're working on it. We'll get the, there needs to be more of those as, as we move forward and it's, it's repetition. Uh, we haven't had a bad pitch. We'll put a couple of balls on the ground, but we haven't had a bad pitch. It's a matter of catching them, um, consistently doing that. Are you ready to name a starter or quarterback? Uh, no, not yet. I want to get through Monday and, uh, and see where we sit, and we'll completely reevaluate it and, and go from there. Gary, where on your list of priorities, if it's there at all, mm -hmm. is a potential Heisman for Melvin? <laughs> oh, wow, it would be a, I wouldn't even, I've never thought of that as being a priority for me, but uh, it sure would be a, a tremendous accomplishment for a young man and to be involved. Um, you know, I say to the great pass rushers, as a D-line coach, you don't make great pass rushers. Heisman Trophy winners, you don't make Heisman Trophy winners. It sure be fun to be part of it. Uh, one day in your career, and I think any coach would say that. And at the end, we just want what's best for Melvin um, and whatever path that takes him down. Hopefully, we get a team around him that can support him because he's had a tremendous camp, and you can see how that kid practices. It's not hard to, you know, fall in love with the way he practices and his work habits and his leadership. I don't know how much you guys have practiced kickoff yet. I know you worked on a little bit today, but just philosophically, if you got a guy who can put it in the end zone for touchbacks. Do you prefer that, or if you got a guy who give you hang time and you can pin him deeper than the 25, what do you prefer? I would I would say it would be a scheme by the week on who you're playing. If we have a dynamic returner and we have an opportunity to put it away from him, we're going to put it away from him. Um, if we feel like we can get an advantage by really popping that ball up there and getting it high in the air, then we may go that. But uh, just general speaking terms, overall 12 game season, I'd rather probably never see one return. <laughs> I'd be good with that. The second of two scrimmages, is that when positions, starting positions are kind of solidified and what you're looking for? Yeah, I would say once we get through Monday, we've got to be able to really sit down and, you know, the five starting offensive linemen, that's not changing. You know, and there's a lot of those positions now that are solidified and we know where they're at, but who's six, seven, eight, and nine, just for instance, for the offensive line, those are, those are up in the air a little bit. And I can go through every one of those positions, but there's a lot of, um, there's still a lot of competition at a few spots, and you know what, right, what wide receiver is going to be the guy as we continue to go through there that gets the start at the three different spots. Um, but we've got to get that solidified and move in the direction of LSU come next Tuesday. What's the biggest uh, unknown for you with regards to your lineup? Is there, is there one big piece to the puzzle that still hasn't found its place yet? Uh, if I looked on, de on defense, I would say you know the next the next safety is it. Is Luburn going to sit in there and take the spot? Is Moose going to turn around and get the spot? Um, the inside linebacker position, I feel good about the three kids that are there, uh, both Derek being hurt. Now you've got the two Trotter kids in that position. And uh, we moved Leon back in there to be able to get some reps. So that's unsettling in my mind. Um, offensively, you know, I, um, I feel pretty good on offense. It's just a matter of you know, figuring out the quarterback scenario. When you were first asked about the inside backers and you said if one broke a shoelace or a mm -hmm. cleat, you said it would be Schobert, yeah. why, why the decision to put Leon instead of Schobert? Well, we did. We had a lot of conversations about that, and, and it's a little bit different when you're anticipating somebody not being at practice for an extended period of time than just a snap or two. And uh, knowing that it's going to be, you know, Derek's going to be you know, not going to practice this week and he's not going to scrimmage, we just really felt like we had to move Leon over there. Uh, keep Joe where he is, and then we're going to try to train a very young player at the F linebacker to potentially back up, and Joe can help teach him better than Leon can because he knows the position better. Who's the young player right now? TJ Edwards.
I don't know how many people are going to write about Family Fun Day previewing that, but w what is the importance, you know, reflecting on last year's experience and the importance of bringing people in here? Yeah, Family Fun Day is great. It's, it's good, great for our kids to just be around fans. And I, you know, I say, again, I sound a lot of things I say, I sound like a broken record, but the bottom line is when our kids can get around, you know, families and fans, and uh, regardless of the ages and who they are, and it, it, it makes them more invested and in so that our coaches understand that uh, you know uh, the power of Wisconsin, the power of Badger Nation, you know, and, and it's good for them. But they also have some life le life lessons that they learn because uh, you can't help but uh, learn something when you're around that group of people and you know they're asking for a picture. Or if they want to be involved with you and how you present yourself, it's important. I'm guessing Oates has flashed enough for you to feel comfortable with him to give him. A shot, yeah, okay. comfortable enough to to give him a shot. If we were healthy, you know, I would like to sit back and say he's uh, to say we're going to go run him down on special teams and burn that red shirt the first game. I'm, I'm not comfortable to say that, to, uh, but we'll, where we're at today, yes. Are you set on a number of true freshmen players here? No, um, I'm sure it's, I would say somewhere between, you know, true freshmen, minimum of seven, and probably a maximum of ten. Yeah, he should be soon, I would say. He but he's just that the same thing. He's got a little tweak in his hammy, so he'll be fine. Anything else? Okay, guys. Thank you.